the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We have come rejoicing into the house of the Lord for this celebration, dear brothers and sisters. And now we stand with Mark and Kylie on the day they intend to form a home of their own. For them, this is a moment of unique importance. So let us support them with our, with our affection, with our friendship, and with our prayer as their brothers and sisters. Let us listen attentively with them to the word that God speaks to us today. <clears throat> then with Holy Church, let us humbly pray to God the Father through Christ our Lord for this couple, his servants, that he lovingly accept them, bless them, and make them always one. And so let us pray. Be attentive to our prayers, O Lord, and in your kindness, uphold what you have established for the increase of the human race, so that the union you have created may be kept safe by your assistance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever, amen. At this time, I invite everyone to please be seated as we listen to God's word. A reading from the Song of Songs. Hark, my lover, here he comes, springing across the mountains, leaping across the hills. My lover is like a gazelle or a young stag. He stands behind our wall, gazing through the windows, peering through the lattices. My lover speaks to me. He says to me, Arise, my beloved, my dove, my beautiful one, and come. O oh, my dove in the clefts of the rock, in the secret recesses of the cliff, let me see you, let me hear your voice, for your voice is sweet and you are lovely. My lover belongs to me and I to him. He says to me, Set me as a seal on your heart, as a seal on your arm, for stern as death is love, relentless as the netherworld is devotion. Its flames are blazing fire, deep waters cannot quench love, nor floods can sweep it away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the midst of your home. 
rejoicing at your table. Blessed are those who love you. Happy those who follow you. Blessed are those who seek you. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, live in love as Christ loved us and handed himself over for us. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church and handed himself over for her to sanctify her, cleansing her by the bath of water with the word, that he might present to himself a church in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing that she might be holy and without blemish, so also husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no one hates his own flesh, but rather nourishes and cherishes it, even as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak in reference to Christ and the church. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. <clears throat> Jesus said to his disciples, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father. Everyone who listens to these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on rock. The rains fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and buffeted the house, but it did not collapse. It had been set solidly on rock. <clears throat> and everyone who listens to these words of mine but does not act on them will be like a fool who built his house on sand. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and buffeted the house, and it collapsed and was completely ruined. When Jesus finished these words, the crowds were astonished at his teaching 
for he taught them as one having authority, not as their scribes. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Today we celebrate the strengthening of human love with divine love. The strengthening of human love with strong, firm, unbreakable divine love. And you know what? Thank goodness. Thank goodness because even the strongest of human loves, if I'm honest with myself, if we're all honest with ourselves, even the strongest of human loves is weak and vulnerable and often does not last the test of time unless it's strengthened in some way. So thank goodness that today we're celebrating the strengthening of this human love between Mark and Kylie with the strength, the unbreakable strength of divine love. In the Old Testament, in the the book of the prophet Jeremiah, we see this situation in this scene and God says through the mouth of the prophet Jeremiah, he says to the the people Israel, he says, "You're you're like a spouse and you've left me and you've gone and married another husband and another one and another one and another one. But I'm still here and I'm still faithful. And he says this in the book of the prophet Jeremiah. He says, return to me and I will heal your rebelliousness. Return to me and I will heal your rebelliousness. And so we see there in this image of the the book of the prophet Jeremiah, human love, even the strongest of human loves, Ultimately, in the grand scheme of things, if we're really honest with ourselves, it's weak. But divine love never fails. The love that Christ has for his church, the love of the love to the point of death. Divine love never fails. And so this is what we this is what we celebrate today. The strengthening, the taking up of human love, of a human relationship, and infusing it and filling it and strengthening it with divine love. It's such a gift. It's such a gift, isn't it? It's such a gift. And you don't have to do anything to receive it. That's what's amazing. It's, it's a gift. It's a free gift. It's not something that you pay for with money. Or you can't buy it in any way. God's free choice to come to you, to fill you, and to strengthen you with this divine love. It's incredible. And my one question is this. How can you receive it? How can we receive it? This gift that God wants to give to us of his love, of his strengthening us with divine love, How do we receive it? The gospel that we just heard today is very helpful. He who hears these words of mine and does them is like a man who builds his house on rock. Hearing and doing, hearing and doing. So often, sometimes we're tempted and you're gonna be tempted and we're all tempted in many different ways we think We think that if I just try a little harder, if I just push a little more, if I just set my will one more time to love this, to do this, to accomplish this on my initiative, according to my plans, then it'll happen. But our gospel today says that this gift comes to us precisely in following, not in initiating, not in our our great endeavors and our great ideas, but in following. And so Kylie and Mark, I wanna invite you today to follow in two different ways, and all of us here today, to follow in two different ways, to follow the Lord in two different ways so that we can build our lives, build this relationship on the rock that cannot be broken. And here are the two ways, to follow the Lord as he comes to us in in the, the ordinary means that we normally think of, scripture, in the lives of other people that inspire us to love, in the sacraments, in this Eucharist that we celebrate here, In all of these different ways, the Lord comes to us and we follow him as he comes to us and he leads us and he guides us and he protects us. But there's another way, and this is why we're here today. There's another way that you today, from this day forward, in a new way, are called to follow. And we've talked about this. I know you know this, and I want them to know this too so that we can all share in this. To follow the Lord, to follow the Lord as he appears to you in the face of your spouse. This is the sacrament of holy matrimony. The Lord's presence, the Lord's face, the Lord coming to us, the Lord coming to you too, 
as he appears to you in the face of Kylie, in the face of Mark. Not that Mark is God, not that Kylie is God, but the Lord works through you and he comes to you and he, he, he makes himself present to you in the face of your spouse. And it's a gift. And all you have to do is follow. So when you see the Lord working in Kylie's life, in Mark's life, when you see the Lord working, follow. Follow, follow, follow. And by doing this, it, it becomes not about me, not about you, not about us as individuals, but about seeking the Lord constantly as he wants to appear to us at every moment of our lives. So all of us here today, gathered, gathered here to the end, let us pray, let us pray for Mark and Kylie as we prepare to enter into the rite of holy matrimony. Let us pray that they would have the courage all the days of their life to follow the Lord as he appears to each of them in the face of their spouse. Amen. Dearly beloved, you have come together into the house of the church so that in the presence of the church's minister and the community, your intention to enter into marriage may be strengthened by the Lord with a sacred seal. Christ abundantly blesses the love that binds you. Through a special sacrament, he enriches and strengthens those he has already consecrated by holy baptism, that they may be faithful to each other forever and assume all the responsibilities of married life. And so, in the presence of the church, I ask you to state your intentions. Mark and Kylie, have you come here to enter into marriage without coercion, freely and wholeheartedly? Are you prepared as you follow the path of marriage to love and honor each other for as long as you both shall live? Are you prepared to accept children lovingly from God and bring them up according to the law of Christ and his church? Since it is your intention to enter the covenant of holy matrimony, join your right hands and declare your consent before God and his church. the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God who joined together our first parents in paradise, strengthen and bless in Christ the consent you have declared before the church, so that what God joins together, no one may put asunder. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Bless, O oh Lord, these rings which we bless in your name, so that those who wear them may remain entirely faithful to each other, abide in peace and in your will, and live always in mutual charity, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Dear brothers and sisters, as we call to mind the special gift of grace and charity by which God has been pleased to crown and consecrate the love of our sister Kylie and our brother Mark, let us commend them to the Lord. Please stand. That these faithful Christians, Mark and Kylie, new, newly joined in holy matrimony, may always enjoy health and well-being, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear Lord. our prayer. That he will bless their, their covenant as he chose to sanctify marriage at Cana in Galilee, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear Lord. our prayer. That they be granted perfect and fruitful love, peace and strength, and that they bear faithful witness to the name of Christian. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. That the Christian people may grow in virtue day by day, and that all who are burdened by any need may receive the help of grace from above. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the grace of the sacrament will be renewed by the Holy Spirit in all married persons here present. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear Graciously pour out upon this husband and wife, O Lord, the spirit of your love, to make them one heart and one soul, so that nothing whatever may divide those you have joined, and no harm come to those you have filled with your blessing. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord for this bride and groom who come to the altar as they begin their married life, that they may always be bound together by love for one another. Holy Father, who formed man in your own image, male and female, you created them, so that as husband and wife, united in body and heart, they might fulfill their calling in the world. O God, who, to reveal the great design you formed in your love, will that the love of spouses for each other would foreshadow the covenant you graciously made with your people, so that by fulfillment of sacramental sign, the mystical marriage of Christ with his church, might become manifest in the union of husband and wife among your faithful. Graciously stretch out your right hand over these, your servants, Mark and Kylie, we pray, and pour into their hearts the power of the Holy Spirit. Grant, O Lord, that as they enter upon this sacramental union, they may share with one another the gifts of your love, and by being for each other a sign of your presence, become one heart and one mind. May they also sustain, O Lord, by their deeds, the home they are forming, and prepare their children to become members of your heavenly household by raising them in the way of the gospel. Graciously crown with your blessings your daughter Kylie, so that by being a good wife and mother, she may bring warmth to her home with a love that is pure and adorn it with welcoming graciousness. Bestow a heavenly blessing also, O Lord, upon Mark, your servant, that he may be a worthy, good, and faithful husband and a provident father. Grant, Holy Father, that desiring to approach your table as a couple joined in marriage in your presence, they may one day have the joy of partaking in your great banquet in heaven. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. It's my great joy and privilege now to introduce to you for the first time Mr. and Mrs. Mark Withers. <laughs> 